Stanley Cup champions of 1985. Presti has got it up high. Oh, what the Stanley Cup 87. You're looking at a superb hockey machine. The Edmonton Oilers have won it again. From 1984 through 1988, the Edmonton Oilers won four Stanley Cups in five years, and more impressively than that, they actually won all four of them on home ice in the arena right behind me. 1988 was not the end of the dynasty. They won yet another Stanley Cup two years later in 1990. They won that one on the road in Boston, but still, five Stanley Cups in seven years. No Canadian team has done anything well no team in the NHL has done anything close to that since then and uh, unfortunately since 1990 only one other Canadian team has won the Stanley Cup at all of course the 1993 Montreal Canadiens one can only imagine what the atmosphere of this parking lot would have been like on those days but today it feels I don't want to say like a ghost town, we're still in Edmonton, but it is trippy, to be honest with you, that you're even allowed to come up to the parking lot here. You've got the Coliseum in, you've got to imagine they've had their business suffer a little bit. Actually, look at that, it looks pretty boarded up to me. Maybe it's not even functioning anymore. Would have been the place to be when the Coliseum was operating. They closed this place in 2017, I believe, was when the last events here were held, and I am pretty shocked that you can still drive up to it. It's been known under many different names uh, over the years that it was used, including the Edmonton Coliseum, the Sky Reach Center, Rexall Place, which by the way, if you look over here, you can still see some marks there from where it used to say Rexall Place back in the day. But after the Oilers moved out of here in 2016, it was reverted back to its original name, the Northlands Coliseum, which is named after an Alberta not-for-profit organization. So one thing you may or may not know about us Canadians is we get a little bit religious about hockey and a little bit religious about our old hockey barns. And this one, although it's not as famous necessarily as, say, the Montreal Forum or Maple Leaf Gardens, this is one of the originals. The Oilers were not originally an NHL team, actually. Uh, they, in 1972, were one of the inaugural teams in a brand new league that was meant to and was semi-successful at being a rival league to the National Hockey League throughout the 1970s. Uh, they actually were quite innovative in a lot of ways, including in terms of offering players very competitive salaries. Back in the day, the NHL was the only show in town, so they had a little bit of a monopoly going on. And one of the things that WHA did famously was sign a lot of huge star players to more money than really they'd ever been paid their entire career. And this put a lot of pressure on the NHL to up their salaries as well. Now in 1972, they were originally called the Alberta Oilers. They only lasted one year under that name before becoming the Edmonton Oilers in 1973. And back then this Coliseum didn't exist. They decided to build this when the Alberta Oilers began playing, but it took them a couple of years. The Oilers originally played at a place called the Edmonton Gardens, which no longer exists. But then after two years at the Gardens, this building was finally completed and ready for hockey in the 74-75 season. The Oilers became a really big deal in 1978 when they made one of the most famous trades of all time, uh, a trade with the Indianapolis Racers that saw them bring a young 17-year-old hockey phenom by the name of Wayne Gretzky into town. Wayne Gretzky, I probably don't have to tell you, even if you're not a hockey fan, you probably know he is considered the greatest hockey player to ever live. In fact, I mean, this building's address will tell you something about how much he meant to this city. Unfortunately for the city of Edmonton and hockey fans across Canada, Wayne Gretzky was also involved 
in another even more famous trade in August of 1988, which saw him sold for a few different players and also a large sum of cash uh, to the Los Angeles Kings. In a move that probably to this day is still paying dividends in terms of hockey's growth in the United States, but still a bone of contention in this city and across, like I said, this country. But yeah, the last game he ever played as an oiler was the game in which they won their fourth Stanley Cup in five years in this building against the Boston Bruins. But yeah, this building lingered on being a site for hockey games for over 40 years. The Edmonton Oilers eventually moved out in 2016. But yeah, for the last six years, this building has felt as though it is a year or less away from getting totally demolished. I'm frankly shocked that it hasn't yet. I came out here to film a video back in 2019 when they said it was months away from demolition, but you know, I think COVID happened. I'm just walking up to what would have been the original main entrance that scores of hockey fans and music fans would have walked in through. As a hockey fan, I was very sad to see this old historic building be replaced, but I must admit, that the new facility that the Oilers play at is absolutely beautiful. I don't know how I'm gonna slot this into the video, but right next to the arena is this amazing collection of neon signs. Look at that old Freight Telegrams railway neon. It looks like every time that they retire an old neon sign, it just gets put up here. This is such an amazing thing. Oh, they keep going over there. Look at this, an arcade, Canadian furniture, tons of theaters and stuff this is amazing yes look at this this is Edmonton's neon sign museum I can't go through the entire history of this in this video but this is tempting me to make another video from here because this is amazing it is hard to be too disappointed when they build such a beautiful state-of-the-art facility such as this the Oilers have played here since 2016 and obviously the NHL thinks it's a beautiful facility as well this was one of the places that during the 2020 lockdown was chosen as a hub city for the NHL. For those extremely unconventional playoffs, they chose Edmonton and Toronto to be the two hub cities. And so every team in the Western Conference wound up camping out in this part of town. It was all roped off for COVID safety. And it's seen a lot of playoff action since then as well, of course. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers made it pretty far this past year, making it to the final four, the third round slash conference finals of the recent playoffs. They unfortunately couldn't get past the Colorado Avalanche this past year, but they did something that was very important to this city, and they won their series against provincial rivals the Calgary Flames. The Edmonton Oilers Calgary Flames rivalry is, of course, absolutely legendary. The Battle of Alberta. They have done something I just love alongside this building by doing a little bit of an Oilers history timeline that focuses on this great dynasty. There is Wayne Gretzky hosting the Stanley Cup for the first time in 1984. There is legendary Oilers coach Glenn Sather. Uh, who, of course, coached them through that dynasty the uh, following year, 1985. Second straight Stanley Cup victory for them. Here's a couple more 80s Oilers legends. Here's Yari Curry and Glenn Anderson. Here's their third Stanley Cup in 1987. A tense nail-biter of a series against the Philadelphia Flyers that went to Game 7. Another legendary Edmonton Oiler, Kevin Lowe. And then one of the greatest of all time, Mr. Paul Coffey himself. That fourth Stanley Cup in 1988, there's Marc Messier hoisting the Stanley Cup as assistant captain in 1988. And then of course in the 1988-89 offseason after Wayne Gretzky was traded in that most famous trade, he became team. Of course, he's got to be part of this history walk and the man himself. Mr. Wayne Gretzky. Of course, they won that fifth Stanley Cup, as this says, in 1990. We are now underneath the walkway here. Of course, it wouldn't be an Oilers tribute without the great Grant Fuhr, one of the great goalies of all time. Here is a photo from the draft in which the Edmonton Oilers drafted really arguably the greatest player in the world right now, 
Connor McDavid, who is of course leading the new generation of the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers have not won the Stanley Cup since 1990. They made it real close, making it to Game 7 of the 2006 Stanley Cup Finals, but couldn't get past Carolina and uh, are hoping to make a Stanley Cup bid in the next few years. They're hoping they're in their window. Isn't that right, Wayne? This is the famous Wayne Gretzky statue. It used to be out front of the arena. I was just at the old Coliseum. But uh, I think it's kind of fitting that once they moved into a new arena. Oh, look at that. Has someone put a hockey card there? Or is that some sort of ticket stub? No, it's a Tim's card. <laughs> An Oilers-themed Tim's card that I can only assume has been used up. And thank you to whoever littered a bag of Sun Chips. That, that ain't right. But yeah, I know some people were a little bit upset that it got moved from the location in which Wayne uh, used to play. But I understand the move, of course. It's something that should be seen by people going to a modern day Edmonton Oilers game. And it's right here, in my opinion, where it belongs. There's his famous 99, here to stay. Wow, this statue is older than I thought it was, erected in 1989, so a year after he was traded, when he was still a, Los a member of the Los Angeles Kings, the city of Edmonton built him this statue. I had no idea it had been around for that long. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's episode. Me and Wayne are going to tell you about where you can find my music, where it's sold or streamed online. To find all that info, you can look in the description. Uh, also in the description are links to where you can find uh, all the other channels for my wonderful other fellow veggies who are also making a video every day this month. Uh, like this video if you like what you saw, subscribe to my channel if you've been enjoying my videos and you can ring the notification bell too if you want to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I will catch you all tomorrow and every day for the rest of this month. Bye Wayne. Maybe I'll see you again soon.